What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to our channel. It's the Choose here from Choose to Explore, where we teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So on this Travel Tip Tuesday, we're going to give you 12 tips to save money on airline luggage. Stay tuned if you want to save some money. If you don't, leave right now. <laughs> so our first tip is to know the airline that you are flying with. And what I mean by that is, do you know the baggage fees? Do you know if you get a free carry-on? Do you know how much a check bag is? Do you know what the weight limit is for the check bag? Well, I'm going to get into that now. So I'm going to talk about the lowest fare option of seven U.S.-based airlines. First being American. So with American, you get a free carry-on, a free personal item, but you have to pay $30 for your first checked item. And Delta is very similar. You have a free carry-on, a free personal item, but you typically have to pay $30 for your first check bag as well. Now United rounds out that big three, and once again you have a free carry-on, a free personal item, but you have to pay $30 for your first check bag. Now the next airline I'm going to talk about has the best baggage policy in the U.S., and that's Southwest Airlines. So you have a carry-on, but you also have free two check bags. So if you know you're carrying a bunch of items, try to travel with Southwest. And the next airline we're going to talk about is JetBlue Airlines. Now we love JetBlue being in the Northeast, but they just introduced their Blue Basic category. Now with Blue Basic, you only get a personal item and you don't get a carry-on. If you want to carry on, you have to upgrade to blue. But more on that is linked in the video above and in the description. And your first check bag is also $30 with JetBlue. Now the last two airlines I'm going to talk about is Spirit and Frontier. Now with these two airlines, you only get a personal item, which is typically just a little book bag or a laptop case or a purse. You have to pay for anything that's going on a carry on or is going to go in an overhead space. Now, I can't talk about prices because there's a wide variety depending on if you buy it during checkout or if you wait all the way to the airport and you buy it. It significantly increases the later you buy that carry-on luggage or that check bag. And something super important that's different about Spirit and Frontier is that they have a 40-pound check bag limit. Now, if you go over that 40 pounds, you can bring it on, but you're going to have an overweight baggage fee. And... These airlines will nickel and dime you if you guys don't read those um, website and read the descriptions for what their weights are. So definitely check out those airline websites for all the most up-to-date details because it is subject to change. But Frontier, Spirit, and JetBlue can be very affordable if you guys only travel with a book bag. And that leads into our next tip. Tip number two. So tip number two is to invest in some good luggage. Now I personally fly with the Wandered bag and that's the Hexon Easy Access Duffel Bag. But I love this bag for all of its features, its hidden pockets, its lay flat packing, and most importantly it's a book bag and I never paid a baggage fee for it yet. Now I took this bag with Spirit, with Frontier, with Ryanair in Europe, with Air Asia in, A in Asia, and I've never once paid a baggage fee, even though it technically is bigger than a personal item. Now, I actually made a video on this bag and a bunch of other travel items, and you can find that linked right above or linked in the description as well. So, one thing we've realized is that if the bag fits on your back as a book bag, a lot of the airlines are not going to actually check the sizing. Technically, only one airline, and that's Frontier, has ever checked our bag to see if it fits in it. And luckily enough, the bag didn't have that much stuff, so it did fit in the personal item bin. And I actually put it in the overhead space, even though we're technically not supposed to. But it's available, so I just put it up there. So our third tip is to pack light. So we actually made an entire video showing you how to do that exactly. So actually, for our honeymoon, we spent three weeks in Asia, and we only went with book bags. Now my next tip is getting accommodations with laundry. Now with this day and age, Airbnb verbos are widely accessible. And getting accommodation, especially because a lot of them are houses with laundry, is not too impractical. And this also supports our previous tip where we said you need to pack light. So tip number five is to wear your items to the airport. Your heaviest items specifically. So you guys should have an airport outfit of your pants, your jacket, your hoodies, all your heaviest items you should wear to the airport. Because if you're wearing them, you're not packing them and they're not going to weigh you. They're only weighing your luggage. So great tip. <laughs> now, desperate times calls for desperate measures. And if your bag is overweight, let me tell you, 
for those airlines that charge you for luggage, take out those items and put them on. I'm talking about extra shorts. I'm talking about extra pants. I'm talking about wear all 17 of the shirts you packed with the hoodie just to make sure that your bag comes in and you do not have to pay for that luggage. <laughs> wear your items to the airport. <laughs> no shame in my game. I'm not paying for luggage. And tip number six is use a travel credit card. So many cards have different perks for free check bags, such as United, JetBlue, American, Delta, and there might be some more that I don't even know, but these are branded credit cards. Now, a lot of these cards have like $99 annual fees. Some of them are free, some of them are $450. But when you think about the annual fee, if the check bag is $30 and you're paying $30 there, $30 back, and my wife comes with me, $30 there and $30 back, on one trip, I'm already saving the annual fee. So, this is one way to save money on those check bag fees. And there are some cards that even give you free credits for flight incidentals, such as the American Express Platinum and my card, which is the Hilton Aspire. And my Hilton Aspire actually gives me $250 to the airline that I choose for baggage fees, for lounges, for upgrading my seat, for snacks on a plane, whatever a flight incidental is, they give me. And you guys can actually see my referral link linked in my description. So tip number seven is to arrive early to the airport. And this is because they typically know the weight limits of the plane. And if you arrive early, they probably have not reached the weight limit at that time. And they may show some leniency to giving you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this is, of course, at their discretion, but they might be a little more lenient if you guys come earlier rather than later. Yes. Yeah, so that's if your baggage is a little bit over the weight limit. So tip number eight is to redistribute your items. Now this is if you ended up not packing light and you didn't really want to put on all your clothes in the airport like he wanted to. Or you did and you still are overweight. <laughs> yes, you're going to need to redistribute your items. So either moving your items from your carry-on to your um, Check bag. checked bag. Or if you come in with a travel partner, you may have to ask them to make some space in their bag for your stuff. She does it to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so if that still doesn't work, you may need to throw some stuff away. And honestly, what's cheaper? Buying a new soap when you land over there or paying for this checked bag? You might need to throw it away. <laughs> So the next tip I'll talk about are using frequent flyer programs. So basically every airline has their own frequent flyer program and they all call them different things. But by receiving status and being loyal to different airlines, one of the perks that a lot of them offer are free baggage. So be loyal to these airlines and your wife. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so tip number 10 is to fly first class. Now, this is not my cup of tea, but if you're already going to pay for a couple check bags, an overweight bag, a carry-on, then you might as well have a better experience. <laughs> now, flying first class, you get, um, so a lot of times you get wider seats, you get more leg room, sometimes you get to lay all the way back. So, this actually, in many cases, could actually save you money by going first class or going business, because a lot of times they include free luggage. So we also put together a list of our top nine apps and websites that help us find cheap flights that's linked in the description below and you might want to download it because one of those apps helps you find cheap first class flights. So download it right now. <laughs> See the world and save a dollar. Yes. Now our next tip is using medical devices and child strollers. Now we personally don't use these items but we're not going to exclude them. Now medical devices are free to check. And the good thing about using medical devices is a lot of them have pockets. Now, you can fill those pockets up with different items and get more luggage without having to pay to check it. And this also goes with child strollers. You can check those items, but that doesn't mean that you can't fill up that stroller with different items as well. So be sure to fill up that stroller to avoid those check bag fees. So tip number 12, if you ultimately cannot avoid baggage fees at the airline, don't fly. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Um, you can take trains, you can take buses, you can drive, and a lot of those times you don't have to pay for those fees. I know when I was in Europe, instead of flying, I took the bus a lot of times, and I didn't have a limit to the amount of luggage that I had. Normally they give me two check bags or so, but... Definitely a lot more than these budget airlines such as Ryanair or um, Jet, I forget the name, but 
The other one with the jet that's orange that um, charges you a lot for those bags. So there you have it. That was our 12 tips on how to avoid baggage fees at the airport. So thank you guys so much for staying tuned and watching this video. If you got anything from it, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. And we'll see you guys on our Travel Tip Tuesday series. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss the next one.